Skip it up and that up. Oh, hi everyone. Rich of Review Tech USA here, and I finally have my Wii U video. This is the new Wii U I bought from a reputable eBay seller. It was not new. They said it was new in box, and it looked like this. But even though I got scammed, it worked, and I decided to do an overview video anyway. So enjoy the footage of me getting scammed by an eBay seller, and I also decided to do a quick overview of every single launch game for the Wii U. It's a hell of a video. Enjoy. Bird breasts. Salute. I hate people. Yo, like at least even try to put the tape back on. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> oh, man, boy, did they. Oh, <laughs> oh I am so. So, so complaining about this. Look at the top. Look at the top. Oh, man. Do they really think I'm that stupid? Thank God I bought this through PayPal. Anyway, holy shit, people are such liars. People are such liars. Oh, man. Don't you just love my brand new Wii U new in box that I got that looks totally brand new and not like it's refurbished from GameStop and someone tried to spin it off as brand new to take more money out of my pocket because they knew it was new in box to be able to get more money for me. Man, this is such a great new in box con- It's not new in box. It's not new in box. It's used. The eBay seller lied. Look at the listing. Here it is. Brand new in box Nintendo Wii U 32 gigabyte Super Mario 3D World Deluxe at Black. What would you think when you saw that you would think that it is brand new in box but here is where the seller got me and they're covering their own ass look at the description this is brand new in box all items are in original wrapping original owner daughter never used now it goes from being new in box to just being never used one very light scratch on console by button not on screen hardly noticeable missing pen does this sound brand new in box, never used? <laughs> I just, I, and then it had a pin for the parental controls. It was locked behind them. So it was definitely used without a question. At best, this eBay seller, maybe they bought it refurbished from GameStop. They thought the box was in really good condition and they could just swindle someone and say, oh yeah, it's brand new. It's never been used and hope they never open it. But at least the console works. So there's that. So I got screwed over, but at least we could have some Wii U gaming fun. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of money on this. Okay, so moving right along for me getting screwed over by the eBay seller, what the hell is the Wii U? Well, I'm gonna give you the Cliff Notes version of what the console is. It was released by Nintendo in 2012. It is the successor to the Wii, and it was a huge, giant flop. It was a giant turd in Nintendo's toilet that they want to forget. When it came to mistakes that Nintendo made with the Wii, Shigeru Miyamoto admitted that the Wii lacking HD capability held it back against the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and with the Wii U, they wanted to remedy that. And tablets around 2012 were a big thing, even Android tablets, so they put a screen on the controller, which had really bad battery life. A lot of developers, including Nintendo, didn't know what the hell to do with the Wii U gamepad screens, so they just let you play the games on the screen, so if someone's watching a football game on the TV, you could 
play your games on the Wii U gamepad. Yay! On top of that, you needed to have the Wii U gamepad to use the Wii U. And the Wii U gamepad was expensive if something went wrong with it because it was 140 bucks because it had a screen on it. And kids like to play Nintendo consoles and that controller would break. So you couldn't use your Wii U if the Wii U gamepad broke. And on top of all that, for the limited capabilities of the Wii U, keep in mind this was Nintendo's eighth gen system, so in theory it was going toe to toe with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, it was slightly more capable than the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, but not by much, so it really was just as capable as the seventh generation consoles. So. Nintendo was asking 8th generation money for a system that pretty much was on par with the 7th generation offerings from their competitors. It was an absolute recipe for disaster, and even though I actually like the Wii U better than the Wii, and it has backwards compatibility with the Wii, and all of the Wii accessories, it was by far Nintendo's worst selling home console at just 13.56 million units sold during its lifetime. And yes, I know the Virtual Boy is a thing, but the Virtual Boy is not a home console. It is not a home console. Why do I have to say that every goddamn time I talk about this? And here is what the Wii U itself looks like. A giant, black, shiny, scratch-prone slab of Nintendo love. Look, I've mentioned this before, I actually like the Wii U better than the Wii, especially because it's fully backwards compatible with the Nintendo Wii, and it has HDMI and it's HD. But the design of the console from a form standpoint leaves a lot to be desired. When you look at the Nintendo Wii, it was sleek. I liked the stand that it had for it. it. It looked nice next to your TV where it would mostly collect dust because mostly soccer moms bought a Wii and then they never touched it again after Wii Sports. But it was a good looking system. The Wii U is just kind of there. All right, let's take a gander around this big, beautiful plastic piece of Nintendo beef. It comes with an optical drive slot because the Wii U actually utilized Blu-ray discs. Don't try to play a Blu-ray movie in it though, because this is Nintendo and they wouldn't do things like that. You got an eject button for the Blu-ray drive. You got your power button, your controller sync button. And under this big, beautiful plastic door here, you have an SDHC card slot and two USB 2.0 ports. The SD card slot could take an SDHC card up to 32 gigabytes, and if you wanted to deal with a super slow USB 2.0 external drive, you could actually store games on one of those to up to two terabytes. On the rear of the console, you have the AC adapter port because the Wii U had two power supplies, one for the gamepad and one for the system. You also have an AV out, which utilizes the same port and cables that the Nintendo Wii used. So if you're using the same television and you upgraded to a Wii U, you were in luck. You didn't need to buy new AV cables. Of course, because the Wii U is fully backwards compatible with the Wii, they have the Wii sensor bar connector. Right next to that, you have HDMI out because the Wii U could output HD resolutions up to 1080p, and then you have a fan to cool the system and two more super slow USB 2.0 ports. And there you have it, folks. That is the Wii U. It is a system. It is plastic. It is uninspired and confused, just like Nintendo was during the Wii U's heyday. So what are the specs of the Wii U? What are the specs of this supposed eighth gen beast that's supposed to go up against the PS4, the Xbox One? What does it have under the hood, Richard? Well, it's basically a Xbox 360 on steroids. It features a triple core power PC based CPU, two gigabytes of DDR3 memory, which games can only access one gigabyte of that. The other gigabyte is meant for the operating system and it has a custom AMD Radeon GPU. I'm not going super detailed with the specs on this. It's a seventh gen console on steroids. Like great Nintendo, I get it. You wanted to get into the HD era but you should have went hd -er, like your competition was about to do a year after you dropped the Wii U. You come out with the system to bring back the core gamer, 
that's still a step behind your competitors' upcoming consoles, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So think about what you did, Nintendo. You made a system to compete with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 when Microsoft and Sony were moving on to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. What the hell were you thinking? But ah, ha, you know Nintendo had an ace up their sleeve, right? And that ace up their sleeve was the Wii U gamepad. It had a 480p screen that you could play games on. And they were hoping that someone could figure out what the hell else to do with it. And excuse me for a second, I'm gonna go a little bit regular car reviews here. And now it's time to talk about this thick boy. Mm. Thick ass, thick ass, thick ass. Ass! Thick ass! <laughs> Thick ass! Uh, this is the Wii U gamepad. Nintendo thought that this was going to be the system seller here. It wasn't. Alright, so specs first. The gamepad has a 6.2 inch screen that has a resolution of 854 by 480. Yes, 480p. It is a touch screen, but it is a resistive touch screen, not capacitive, meaning that it senses pressure, meaning that it's not going to be as accurate as a capacitive touch screen. It has a front facing camera, which I think literally no one used. Dual analog sticks, which are actually quite nice. It has nine access motion detection via a three axis accelerometer, a three axis gyroscope, and a three axis magnetometer. And the gamepad supports NFC, so if you're into amiibos, there's that. You could, you could use those. The nicest thing about the Wii U gamepad is the screen, and not because they thought of innovative things to do with it. No, you could actually just play games on it. I was actually playing Sniper Elite V2 on the Wii U gamepad screen, and it was great. It was fine. There was no latency. The The screen, even though it's only 480p, has a really crisp picture with good viewing angles. You could definitely see how the Wii U gamepad was the rough draft of the Nintendo Switch, without question. The battery life on the gamepad was about three to five hours. I would say more so on the three hour side, depending on how bright you kept the screen. So for a gamepad, its battery life kind of sucked. And out of the box, this is the only controller the Wii U came with, the Wii U gamepad. And to make matters even worse, the Wii U system is dependent on you having a working Wii U gamepad. So if your Wii U gamepad breaks, you better get ready to fork over a decent chunk of change to replace it. Now to get a Wii U replacement gamepad would be about anywhere from $110 to $140. So it's not as expensive as I thought it would have been, but it's still a lot more expensive than a regular gamepad. So when you bought a Wii U, you better make sure your kids don't drop that big expensive controller or you're gonna have to put out a third of the money to replace it. What were they thinking making a console solely dependent on a singular controller? Jesus Christ, Nintendo. All right, so what about the innovation, Rich? Come on, it's Nintendo. They're the same company that had my grandma swinging around a white dildo in her hands pretending she was playing tennis. They have to have something here. And yes, they do. It, uh, it's not good though. Well, Nintendo thought the big selling point was gonna be using the Wii U gamepad and incorporate it with the gameplay experiences, like with Nintendo Land. I, I'm gonna go more into this when I go over Nintendo Land, but there's, for example, there's mini games, The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest. You use a bow and arrow, you, you move around the gamepad using the accelerometer to aim, it's something that could be done on a smartphone. Nintendo was hoping this would be the next revolution for the Wii family, hence why they called it the Wii U. Confusing naming and people thought it was just a gamepad add-on for the original Wii, but anyway. However, unlike the Wii Motes, the Wii U gamepad was nowhere near as approachable and easy to use. You didn't just, oh, I need to swing the Wii Mote like a racket. I'm gonna swing it like a racket. I need to hold it like a baseball bat. I'm gonna hold it like a baseball bat. This was, look down at your Wii U gamepad. Look up at the screen. Look down again. Turn the Wii U gamepad this way. It was not approachable. Grandmas were not going to want to do this. They are going to smack you across the face with the white Wiimote dildo if you try to make them play with the Wii U gamepad. It was confusing and it wasn't fun. There is one positive though I will say about the Wii U gamepad. 
It is the most comfortable controller I have ever used. I'm including the DualSense for the PlayStation 5, the Series X controller. It is just so damn comfortable to hold and use. I have a little bit of carpal tunnel and it doesn't flare up at all when I use the Wii U gamepad. I definitely can't say that about the Nintendo Switch because its ergonomics suck unless you get a satisfy gaming grip, link below in the description, shameless plug. They also have gaming grips for the new Nintendo Switch OLED, which makes it a hell of a lot more comfortable for long sessions of play. Tell your dad about it. But whether I was playing Super Mario 3D World or Sniper Elite V2 or Call of Duty, I really enjoyed playing all of the games with the Wii U gamepad. So for all of its other flaws, at least it's really comfortable, and playing games on the Wii U gamepad screen is pretty enjoyable too. A useless and obsolete feature now with the Nintendo Switch existing, but back then it was pretty cool. Well, all right, that's enough about the console itself. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Cause we're about to take a look at every single launch title that came out for the Wii U. Oh dear God, help me. Uh. Assassin's Creed 3. Another console port came to the Wii U launch lineup. This time it was Assassin's Creed 3. Unfortunately, the game looked a bit low res compared to other console ports, which is really sad because at that point, the Wii U was approximately seven years newer compared to the Xbox 360. And the Wii U gamepad was underutilized according to most reviewers of the game. You could use the gamepad as a mini map to help you identify enemies and find objective locations. You can also press the touch screen to whistle to call your horse over to you. Uh, uh, and you know how much I appreciate horse touching. Uh. And it's an Assassin's Creed game. You play a little bit, there's a cutscene. You play more, there's a cutscene. Oh look, I'm gonna totally stealthily climb up the side of a theater like an asshole and no one will see me. How that's a thing, I don't know. Then there's a cutscene. Boy, there's another cutscene. Another loading screen. Another cutscene. That's Assassin's Creed 3. It is Assassin's Cutscene 3. Oh my god. Oh. And it's an, it's an Assassin's Creed game. You really want to play Assassin's Creed 3? You could get this on the Switch too. Moving on. Oh. Oh. Horse touching. Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 had a unique selling point when it came to the Wii U. It had the ability to let two players play online and not have to share the TV. One player would use the Wii U gamepad and the other one would use the TV to play the game online. While sales numbers were never released to the public, it's rumored to have only sold 23,000 copies. An Activision employee called the numbers, and I quote here, abysmal. And I would agree. So how the hell does Call of Duty Black Ops 2 play on the Wii U? It occasionally hits 60 frames per second. I mean, it's fine. It looks just like it would on the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. But honestly, your best bet is to just play Call of Duty Black Ops 2 either on your PC or via backwards compatibility on your Xbox series console. But hey, unlike the Nintendo Switch, at least the Wii U got a couple Call of Duty installments. Am I right? Yeah. Don't play them though. Play Call of Duty somewhere else. Darksiders 2. While most hardcore Nintendo fans demanded a new Legend of Zelda for the Wii U, which they got right when the system was on its way out with Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, they got Darksiders 2, which many at the time considered to be as close as you could get to a Zelda in terms of gameplay. Unfortunately, the game suffered from a large amount of screen tearing when playing on and off the TV and on the gamepad. Overall, Darksiders 2 was reviewed as a great homage of the Zelda series and received mostly great scores, but it was riddled with performance issues. And look, I absolutely love the Darksiders series and Darksiders 2 is a great game, but it doesn't play great on the Wii U. Frame rate issues galore, and yes, there is a decent amount of screen tearing. On top of that, this is another title that you could get on the Nintendo Switch or virtually anywhere else. So as a video game, I highly recommend Darksiders 2. 
but I could not in good faith recommend the Wii U version. Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. And man, this game was a huge disappointment. Unfortunately, Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two didn't take advantage of the gamepad, only displaying a map and giving you quick access to some abilities in game. Now, Disney had projected the game to sell over 2 million units worldwide, but the game failed to reach 600,000 and went on to ultimately sell only 529,000 copies. This led to the demise of its developer, Junction Point Games, and put the final nail in the coffin when it came to the future of the series. So here's how this game works. Mickey has a paintbrush. He could either shoot paint or paint thinner. And with paint, he can make an object appear. And with paint thinner, he can make an object disappear. You also have a partner called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And with Oswald, you figure out puzzles in this puzzle platformer. But there's some bad news here. If you don't have a friend to play with, the AI that controls Oswald is really dumb, and Oswald is a complete idiot. On top of that, the game is littered with issues like weird camera angles, a choppy and inconsistent frame rate, and somewhat frustrating controls and combat. Great idea, bad execution. Sadly, I'd say avoid this one. ESPN Sports Connection. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, jeez, this is... This, this is hell. <laughs> oh, God. So here we go. Another Ubisoft Wii U launch banger. Remember Wii Sports? Of course you do. It was the packing game that came with every Wii. It was sitting at 82.9 million homes across the world. And Ubisoft thought it would be a great idea to capture some of that magic. But the game is shit. It's fucking shit. Ah! Nintendo Life gave the game a 4 out of 10, saying ESPN Sports Connection's biggest problem is that it feels like it was slapped together in a matter of months with seemingly little interest to exist beyond merely existing. Someone had to make a motion control tennis, right? Noble, perhaps, to take one for the team like that. But families looking to replicate Wii Sports magic, this hardware launcher better off with a ticket to Nintendo Land. They couldn't have said it any better. All it is, is you take Wii Sports for the Wii, you suck every ounce of life out of it. And that is ESPN Sports Connection. They, there's nothing to it except the kart racing. It's take all the fun out of Mario Kart, and that is kart racing and ESPN Sports Connection. If God himself tells you to play this game, you tell him no, you avoid it at all costs. Next game, please. FIFA Soccer 13. Joy. While the gamepad did feature unique gameplay elements that could only be done using the gamepad screen, overall, most reviewers felt the ability to touch the screen to pass the ball and send supporting players on runs was frustrating, and this was due to your own fingers blocking the screen. IGN gave FIFA Soccer 13 a 6 out of 10, saying, and I quote, FIFA 13 on Wii U is a decent game and uses the gamepad intuitively, but it's not really FIFA 13. Wait until next season. And yet it's a soccer game or a football game, depending on where you come from, and I don't really know much about soccer. Uh, I kicked the ball around, seemed fine. I'm, I'm sure there's been many soccer games since that you should play instead of this. It's almost a decade old. Moving on. Game Party Champions. If you could even call this a game, oddly enough, Game Party Champions is the fifth game in the Game Party series. It included eight mini games, ping pong, ski ball, water gun, mini golf, air hockey, hoop shoot, football, and baseball. It's the worst game out of the launch lineup. It currently holds a 24% on Metacritic and Nintendo Life gave it a one out of 10 saying, Game Party Champions is, to put it nicely, a bad game. So you're wondering how I feel about Game Party Champions personally. You know what you do? You find someone that you hate. You despise them. You go on eBay or you go wherever, a flea market, and you pick up a copy of Game Party Champions for the Wii U. Then you sit them down. You force them to play air hockey using the Wii U gamepad, and they will torture them. They will suffer more than they've ever suffered in their life. This is something that should be used in interrogation rooms. This is the worst game I have ever played on any platform ever. This is not a party game. This is not a video game. This is a vile, horrible piece of shit. Avoid it at all costs, please. Thank you. Moving on. Just Dance 4. 
Not that I was expecting a lot, but the Wii U gamepad is mostly put aside while playing this game. Ubisoft did of course try and implement the gamepad while you danced around, but most players found it to be awkward. This, however, is one of the games that helped keep sales of Wiimotes alive. Players would hold the Wiimote in their hand and copy the character's dance moves on the screen. At the time, Just Dance was a major success for Ubisoft, and Ubisoft showed its dedication to Nintendo when it released the final Wii game ever, Just Dance 2020. That's over 13 years after the Wii was released. And yep, it's more Just Dance. You follow the moves on the screen, the more accurate you are, the higher you score. i rather play Beat Saber in VR, but that's just me. New Super Mario Bros. U With New Super Mario Bros. U, Nintendo brought Mario out of the standard definition world of the Wii and into the HD world of the Wii U. New Super Mario Bros. U was the third highest selling Wii U game with 5.38 million units sold worldwide. And a new version called New Super Luigi sold 3 million units worldwide just 7 months later, making 7 of the top 10 best-selling Wii U games revolve around the Mario franchise. And it's another New Super Mario Bros. game. If you've played them on the DS, the 3DS, the Wii, or on any other Nintendo platform, you know what to expect here. Don't go out and buy a Wii U for this because you could actually get the same exact game on the Nintendo Switch right now. Buy it there. Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge. Razor's Edge was a console exclusive at the time of its release. It's an enhanced port of Ninja Gaiden 3 that includes all the DLC from the original title, as well as introducing players to a new way to select weapons using the touchscreen on the gamepad. The game received mostly mixed reviews at the time. Kevin Von Ord from GameSpot said, It's harder and more varied than its original release, but Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge doesn't reach the greatness of its forebears. Well, you know what, Kevin Von Ord? You can stare at my Review Tech USA holes because I thought this game was friggin' awesome. I think it's frantic, fun, hack and slash gameplay at its finest. So much so that instantly I went and purchased the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. I can't recommend this game enough. Go buy it for your Switch right now. Nintendo Land. When Nintendo releases new consoles, they tend to release a game at launch that will demonstrate the concept of the new system, and in this case, the Wii U's gamepad functionality. Nintendo Land features 12 mini games based on existing Nintendo game franchises such as The Legend of Zelda and F Zero that each use a different function of the gamepad. As of March 2020, Nintendo Land has sold 5.2 million copies, making it the fifth highest selling. Wii U game, which is kind of obvious because it was a pack-in game for many Wii U systems. Well, how does it play? Like a bunch of mini games that you would play in a cheap Android tablet that you would get off the Google Play Store for about 99 cents each, or maybe they would even be free. Hey, I know there's people that love Takamaru's Ninja Castle and using the Wii U gamepad to throw ninja stars, but it's just really awkward and feels really dated to play Nintendo Land. You have to remember the Wii U gamepad is a resistive touchscreen and honestly, Nintendo Land, I even had fun with back in the day when I first got my Wii U. But looking back at it now in 2022, this wasn't the watershed game that was going to get people to run to the Wii U in droves like Wii Sports was for the Nintendo Wii. Okay, moving on, we have a lot more games to go over. Jesus Christ, Ubisoft, you're back again? This is Rabbids Land. Long before the Rabbids would team up with Mario on the Nintendo Switch in Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, the Rabbids failed to reach a larger audience on the Wii U with Rabbids Land, a game that outright ripped off Mario Party, but ultimately sucked even worse. And again, another Ubisoft Wii U console exclusive that received mixed reviews. IGN gave it a 5 out of 10, calling it a mediocre party game mini game collection. And that's exactly what it is. Sure, some of the mini games incorporate the Wii U gamepad, but who cares? This is more shovelware garbage from Ubisoft trying to cash in on Wii U gimmicks. Quality over quantity, Ubisoft. Learn it. Hey guys, am I going back and forth between Ubisoft and Ubisoft? Am I saying Mario and Mario in the video here? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. You know what? Potato, potato, you're going to deal with it. 
Don't like it, eat my ass. Ah, finally, another game I could actually recommend, Scribblenauts Unlimited. Now here's a unique game that was only made better when played on the Wii U gamepad, and it really actually worked. It featured a combination of the Wii U gamepad's touchscreen and physical control options. Using the gamepad to summon objects made the whole experience seem even more immersive. Overall, Scribblenauts Unlimited for the Wii U received great reviews. Nintendo Life said, this is the kind of game that looks great, controls well and provides a whole heck of a lot of family-friendly fun. And you know what? They're 100% right because this one does kind of slap. You could pretty much type in any object you could think of on the Wii U gamepad, minus, you know, things like a dildo, and they'll appear on screen and then you could use those to solve puzzles. I love the art style, the gameplay is brilliantly done, and Scribblenauts Unlimited is definitely a game I could see myself playing with my kids. And now it's time for Sing Party! Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. Oh Jesus Christ, this game sucks! Alright, what they were trying to do with this game is bring the experience of going to karaoke night at your local bar home. But what Sing Party failed to do is bring the feeling of singing your drunken heart out to the Wii U the game received overwhelmingly crappy scores. IGN said, and I quote, the functional karaoke mechanics and effective gamepad integration make Sing Party a passable option, it's not, for those gamers looking for a little musical accompaniment to their parties, but a weak track list festers underneath Sing Party's accessible, bland exterior. And without an adequate progression system to encourage repeat play, Sing Party misses its leap for gaming greatness. Oh, for Christ's sake, they're being kind to it. Look, I'm not a uh, karaoke aficionado here, but I could, I could promise you this. Avoid this game at all costs. Go on Amazon right now and buy the cheapest Chinese knockoff karaoke machine. Get an app for your phone. Get an app for your tablet. Get get an app for your ass cheek. Anything else. Anything. And do karaoke on that. Enjoy a karaoke experience there. Go to a bar. Have a few drinks. Get a buzz. Sing there. Do anything else except play this game. It is a garbage karaoke experience. It shouldn't even exist. Skylanders Giants. At the time of release, Andy Robertson from Wired.com called Skylanders Giants for the Wii U the quote-unquote definitive version of the game. The reasoning behind this was the ability to create a family game night where two of his kids would play on the TV while he would take control of the gamepad that displayed mission details and player stats. And let me tell you something, I was pleasantly surprised at this game and I think Activision should reboot this series. The starter pack that I purchased actually comes with this little USB device called the Portal of Power and you get these three figurines. There is the Jetvac character, Cinder Undead or Tree Rex, and each of them have different abilities, and you place them on the Portal of Power, and as you place the character on there, that's the character as you play as in the game. And it's a really intuitive, interesting idea, and it works really well, and as soon as you put a different character on the Portal of Power, they show up on the screen. Granted, the game visually is nothing to look at, but it's a pretty fun platformer with an interesting twist, and I could totally see me playing this with my five and four year old. Very unique game for kids, and I recommend it if you could get your hands on it. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed! At the time, carting games that didn't have the word Mario in the title didn't set these sales charts on fire. Unfortunately, Sony's attempt at a Mario Kart clone, Little Big Planet Karting, also failed to capture the magic of its mainline game, and it was time for Sega's Little Blue Hedgehog to change all that. The Wii U gamepad was used to display a map of the course, a weapon camera, and even a rear view camera. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed was also the first Wii U third-party title to reach number one on the sales charts during its release window. And you know what? This is a pretty damn good game, and at least for me, it was really damn hard. Or I just suck at video games. And I wasn't using the drift properly. And I suck at video games. And I, I just wasn't playing it right. And I suck at video games. But it's a damn good karting game. The only complaint I have is I wish it was 60 FPS instead of 30, but I'm sure that was a hardware limitation of the Wii U. But if you could get your hands on Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, 
I would say pick it up. It's fun. Tekken Tag Tournament 2, Wii U edition. So what did Tekken Tag Tournament offer on the Wii U that it didn't offer on any other version of the game? Mushroom Battle Mode. In this mode, various mushrooms from the Mario series would fall into the arena, and it is a hell of a lot of fun. This would cause players to grow or shrink in size or take extra damage, and it's really frantic and crazy, and I really enjoyed playing it. I wouldn't say this mode specifically is a reason to run out and get the Wii U version of Tekken Tag Tournament 2, but it's definitely a nice bonus. The gamepad was used also to tap to pull off certain combos and moves during matches, so if you're more of a casual player, that's a nice perk as well. Tekken Tag Tournament 2 looks gorgeous on the Wii U, it's frantic, it's fun, and it has Snoop Dogg in it. What more can you ask for? Put a mushroom up my ass and play this one, it's awesome. But now it's time to discuss a big giant turd of a game, and that game would be Transformers Prime. Oh god. Transformers Prime was based on the animated series of the same name. It even featured the whole cast from the animated show, which included Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime and Frank Welker as Megatron. It received fairly positive reviews at the time, which is somewhat surprising for a game based on an animated series, and even more surprising for a game that I feel is complete crap. It has all the stuff you would expect from a Transformer game. It's a third-person action platformer slash shooter, but it just has really dumb dull, uninspired gameplay. The combat is exceptionally boring, and the visuals look like something from the sixth generation. There's better Transformer games out there. Avoid this one. Warriors Orochi 3 Hyper. Kind of sound like the announcer from Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur. I don't know why I did that. Anyway. Here's a game that mixed up the launch lineup of games. This is a crossover of the Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors games. On paper, the idea seemed great. Bring the fans of each game together on a Nintendo console, but unfortunately, most reviewers felt the game was an uninspired port with a ton of missed opportunities regarding the Wii U's gamepad. The producer of the game spoke on the system's poor CPU performance, saying, For games in the Warriors series, including Dynasty Warriors and Warriors Orochi, when you have a lot of enemies coming at you at once, the performance tends to be affected because of the CPU. He said dealing with that was a challenge, and I've heard that before about the Wii U's lackluster CPU performance. And to be quite frank with you, I've never been a big fan of the Dynasty Warriors series. You just go to a big group of enemies, mow them all down, go to another group of enemies, mow them all down, rinse and repeat. It bores me, never been a fan. This game is more of the same, and honestly, the Wii U version doesn't run great. Even if you are a fan of the Dynasty Warriors franchise, I would pick another game in the series on another platform to play. Skip this one. But now we're digging deeper into the pile of Wii U launch title assery with Wipeout 3. No, this isn't the futuristic racing series from the PlayStation. I wish it was. It's an insane game based off of the ABC hit game show. One of the main complaints from reviewers at the time was that this game literally didn't have a way to fail during a challenge. No matter what, you'd be forced into finishing the levels. Unsurprisingly, the game received mediocre reviews. And I don't even know how the hell you could call it a game because there's literally no consequence to anything. You swim in the water, you swim on rails, it put you in the direction you need to go. You cannot go in any other direction. You could fall a billion times and not fail. It's not a game. Night Trap for the Sega CD was more of a game than this. Avoid it at all costs. What a piece of shovelware crap. Your Shape Fitness Evolved 2013. So there's about 43 and a half million of you that bought the Wii Fit and its accessory, the balance board. So you know that Ubisoft had to try to milk more money out of your pocket with Your Shape Fitness Evolve 2013. Cha-ching, you cash cow, you. You bastard. We're Ubisoft. Give me your money. Give me all your money. So Ubisoft used the gamepad to display your data from each of the 49 different workouts. While it's tough to actually get sales numbers for this, it's safe to assume the Wii U version didn't sell well, and this put an end to the series. Look, I know I don't have the physique of a Greek Adonis, but I do like workout games, but I like VR, like Beat Saber or Super Hot, where it's engrossing and you don't feel like you're working out and you're having fun and breaking a sweat. 
This just feels like a workout instructional VHS tape from 1987. I know a lot of people like these kind of games, but this actually didn't sell well for the Wii U, and it probably killed the series. Zombie U. Ah, the game that was supposed to be the Wii U system seller. Zombie U sold a total of around 1 million units for the Wii U and had some of the best gamepad integration from a Ubisoft game to date. However, there's an asterisk to that, and we'll get to it in a second. The player used the gamepad to scan the environment and maintain the main character's inventory. Overall, the Wii U version received good reviews. Jim Sterling of Destructoid at the time wrote that Zombie U zombies were intimidating by comparison with other zombie games. Sterling called it an oppressive experience since players were diverted by the gamepad while the game continued in real time. But yeah, that's good and all. You could consider it a Immersive, I consider it annoying. I don't like Zombie U at all. And the game in and of itself isn't bad. You want to know what kills it for me? The Wii U gamepad. Every single time you got to do something, look down at the pad, look up at the screen, look down at the pad, look up at the screen. You need an inventory, look down at the pad. You want to pick something up, look down at the pad. What? Ah, oh, it's not, it adds nothing to the experience except inconvenience. You know what though? The combat's pretty good. The graphics are pretty damn decent. It's a pretty good survival horror game, but get the version for the PC, Xbox One, or PlayStation 4. Avoid the Wii U version. The Wii U gamepad is not a selling feature. It actually makes the game crappier. And last, but definitely not least, thank God, is Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. It's Batman Arkham City just like it was on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or PC, but with tacked on gimmicks for the Wii U gamepad that you won't care about. You could play Arkham City on the actual Wii U gamepad, which is now an outdated feature. Just get the Batman Arkham Collection, which is coming to the Nintendo Switch. You can use the gyroscopes in the gamepad to look around the room for clues like an idiot. It's awkward and no one cared about it. Just use the analog sticks to look for clues. Look, it's Batman Arkham City. It's a fantastic game, and some argue it's the best game in the entire Arkham franchise, but the gimmicks for the Wii U version aren't worth picking up this version for. The Wii U version also suffers from performance issues, and you could get vastly superior versions of Batman Arkham City on a variety of platforms, including the Nintendo Switch, very soon. Great game, map port, play it elsewhere. Man, what a hell of a journey making this Wii U video has been. See me walking through this entrance right here. This is the mall entrance I walked into to pick up my Nintendo Wii U pre-order back in the day in 2012. I had a lot of high hopes for the Nintendo Wii U, um, and Nintendo delivered on virtually none of them. There was great games on the Nintendo Wii U, many classics that you could now get most of them on the Switch. But this was Nintendo's biggest home console failure. It wasn't that much more powerful than the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and we were going into the PS4 and Xbox One era, and the screen, mostly, was gimmicky. Save for Scribblenauts, most other games, it just wasn't necessary, and when they made the Wii U gamepad integral to the gameplay, it just was really cumbersome and inconvenient. So, interestingly enough, Nintendo's biggest home console failure, the Wii U, may have been the rough draft for their biggest home console, mostly, success, the Nintendo Switch. Let that sink in. Going back into history with gaming is interesting. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. And don't trust eBay sellers no matter what their rating is. I'm proof.